it's been a little while since I did an altar tour, so I thought, let me update you on how my altar looks now. So I think this is a couple of years on from the first altar tour that I did. So you'll see that I have this lovely cover, this quite chintzy, 70s style <laughs> cover on my altar, mainly to cover up the fact that it is a working altar. So there are a lot of burns and various different marks on top. So I don't obviously have this on when I'm fully using it, but yes, it has quite damaged my beautiful cabinet. But anyway, this is what I have on here currently. So not a huge amount has changed. I've still got my salt in my lovely little French jam container. Cauldron. So a fair amount of new crystals. So I'll look at those with you in a minute. I've taken to making my own smoke cleansing bundles from Simply Garden Sage. So just a huge wad of it. This is great to burn, really straightforward. Saves you so much money from buying it online. Burns the same. And um, still got the same Palo Santo. So I like to, I always see sage as being a spiritual bleach. It just kind of wipes out everything negative and positive. So I like to follow up with the Palo Santo afterwards. Just brings in a bit of sweetness, a little bit of joy. So that's what I follow on with. In terms of Oracle cards, so on here, I've got many other different Oracle and Tarot cards, but these are some that I come back to regularly. So I've got the Forest Fay cards. These are great ones that I come back to on the daily actually, because well, if ever I'm going to kind of do a reading, I'll reach for these. They've just got the most beautiful drawings. They're really straightforward. You don't need a book to go with them. So let me show you some of the illustrations here. It's a bit hard doing it one-handed, but they're just such gorgeous artwork. If you're like me and you love the Fae, then you'll definitely like these. So yeah, this is one of the sets that I come back to regularly. Often get a lot of questions about these if I, if I post any pictures on Instagram or anything with them on. An Oracle card deck that I don't always gravitate to, but they are very good for questions in relation to romantic relationships. So yeah, these are quite pretty romantic angels Oracle cards. They're a newer set that I've got. This is my second favorite tarot card deck. They are absolutely beautiful. Really gorgeous art on those. The reason I say second favorite is because I always, always, always come back to the Rider Waite deck, the first set that I ever was gifted when I was 21. So they're always the ones that I reach for, but I do come to these every now and again. They are absolutely beautiful, quite big as well. So I still also work with these. Absolutely love animals within the craft as power animals, looking at familiars and so on. Obviously sort of working with them in the astral realm. So really like these spirit animal oracle cards, especially as well if you are somebody that often finds you have a lot of synchronicities with animals or, you know, see a lot of animal symbolism or... Yeah, if you kind of see them come up in dreams and so on, they are really good ones to work with if you are very drawn to the animal kingdom. These are cards by Rebecca Campbell. She is the author of Light is the New Black. And these are absolutely beautiful. Really drawn to these because my name is Carly Rose. So I'm very much into anything that has rose symbolism. But if you are like me and you like anything related to as a witch. I'm very drawn to angels still. I get a lot of dreams with angel numbers in and so on. And that's kind of like how I came across Rebecca and her work, but those cards are absolutely beautiful. So I have on my altar four books that I always, three books I always gravitate to. One of them is a cheeky little one on here. 
These ones that I reference regularly in my craft. So I have one of these you might have seen on the previous altar tour that I did, which is Lunar Living by Kirsty Gallagher. If you want to work with the moon and you haven't got any idea where to start, if you already work with the moon, this will just kind of tie up any loose ends or any areas that you may not be sure with. It is a book I reference pretty much every full and new moon in regards to what sign it's in, things that you need to be aware of, what you might want to work on, what's kind of going on basically. So I really, really recommend Luna Living. That was the first book after reading quite a few that I felt explained everything and I could easily work with it at each cycle. The second book, I had to put this on, this is my book. <laughs> this is my book, The White Witch's Book of Healing, weaving magical rituals throughout your craft for sacred healing and reclamation of the wild witch within. So if you are somebody who is very drawn to working on shadow work, there's a kind of a lot of spicy psychology in there. It is focused on areas like soul loss, um, really just getting into the gritty side of working through a lot of emotions, addiction, relationship issues. But there was also lots of reference in there to the moon, working with herbs, different aspects of the craft, all ties into emotional healing. So that is my little book. And then next to that, I have got the Modern Witchcraft Book of Tarot. So this is one I've had for quite a while now that I use along with my Rider Waite deck. Really love this book, it's really straightforward. Kind of went through a period where if you don't have a tarot book, the Biddy Tarot website is absolutely amazing as well for referencing if you are giving yourself tarot readings. But yeah, just, I wanted a book that I could have at my altar so I wouldn't have to rely on my phone. I didn't want to bring my phone into any like divination that I was doing. So yes, that's the book. So this book is a book I was gifted recently, but I cannot recommend enough. It is by the wonderful Julia Helena Hadass, the modern witchcraft book of astrology. Now this book just explained so much to me in regards to birth charts, the planets, celestial magic, Genuinely, this is an area of the craft that I really struggled with, but I wanted to know so much more about. But yes, this tied up all the loose ends. So again, I find myself referencing this on the regular so I understand what is going on with the planets. And yes, this is an area of the craft that I've got very into of late. So I keep those there as regular reference books that I can use. They are so good. I have got another. This is the Deborah Blake... Deborah Blake Witch Tarot Cards, I think, that I was gifted, Everyday Witch. They are absolutely beautiful. They're new to me. I haven't really put a lot of energy into those yet, so I do need to kind of get a bit more familiar with those before I start using them regularly. This is such a gorgeous, I love, love, love the imagery of the hair. Obviously, the hair has a lot of association with witches through the course of time. So this is from my very good friend, Nikki. Nature never did betray the heart that loved her. So yes, obviously love the hair for all the shape-shifting theories of witches changing into them. But just in general, they're such a magical creature. I love the image of the hair looking up at the moon as well. It is one of my favorites. So yes, um, I also did a lot about the hair on the podcast. So just one of the animals that I'm really drawn to. My wonderful witchy picture. I think this is called Riding to the Sabbath, but I love her. She's got a very peachy bottom. Um, but yes, really love that picture. I've got quite a few different witchy pictures in my house. Love a lot of the classics. I have got a lot of goat imagery. So I, I'm i not necessarily a Baphomet worshipper. I do find Baphomet fascinating. I was very drawn to Baphomet as a result of the works by Eliphas Levi, Levy. 
but yes I just love the imagery of the goat because of again like the association with the witch I have got the goat as my company's logo the witch that is similar to the witch from the film the witch actually is the kind of goat for my company and again there's another goat <laughs> so this little pouch is from one of my favorite witchy companies this is by no means advertising for them i just love their stuff called i think it's ye olde oh here we go ye olde witchcraft shop um and so i've got quite a few different bits of theirs on my altar because i'm always buying bits from them so this is a oil called spirit night so it helps with like psychic abilities and divination and so on I've got a few different ones of these. They're just so adorable. I love the packaging. I love that medieval oldie worldy feel. She also has a goat as well for her, as you can see, for her logo. Um, this is another one called The Witch. I have also got all of these little bits here. So some graveyard earth for spell work. Yule oil. Oh, look at that, it's so sweet. I have got Mabon oil, they smell amazing as well. Sawan oil. So you could use those to anoint candles. I mean, you could use them for anything really. I simply use them on my wrists, on my, I don't know, just on my body when it comes to doing divination. I do actually wanna get some more for all the other Sabbaths that are within the year. I've got my very cute little herb spoon here with a crystal on the end. Absolutely love that. This is some more product from Yoldi Witchcraft Shop. Again, actually, flying ointment. So this is for the use of if you want to do any journeying or anything. This is really good stuff. Again, with the oils as well. And you've got the free hairs on the top too. I have also got, so this is, I love this. This is my wonderful uh, fortune telling style lamp. This is an original from the 70s. This came from my grandma. She uh, was, you know, she was getting rid of it, asked me if I wanted it. Abs absolutely love this. I've got my little imagery of the sun. Obviously, we are just coming out of, well, we've just had Ostara, so the return of the light is upon us currently. I've got my, haven't actually consecrated it as a wand, as an affirmate as yet. This beautiful piece of wood, and I should know what tree it comes from, but one of my lovely friends gifted this to me after a trip to the woods it was a piece that he had found in 2009 and uh yes he works with wood and kind of gave that piece to me to use so i guess you could say that i need to consecrate it as my affirme i should know what what tree that comes from so i'm very ashamed to say that i don't but that has got a lot of energy i can definitely feel energy from that so I've also got here my, right, what have we got here? My <laughs> Baphomet ring, another little ring there just to um, honour the great horned one. I've got my Rider Waite cards in here. I've had these since I was 21. So that's a whole 19 years ago. Still going strong. There's a lot of energy in those. And a few crystals in there just to keep alongside to you know just oh, put some of that energy on it i've got talking of crystals let's move these out of the way i have got oh quite a few i'm drawn to rose quartz in the main i love love rose quartz i also love smoky quartz i think i love it even more now that i know that it is one of the crystals of scotland so i've got a big chunk of that in here I have got this big bit, believe it or not, that is citrine. I've got uh, selenite. I have got some rose quartz, amethyst, kunzite. Ah, oh, there's quite a few in there. So yeah, there's a good little collection in there. I have also recently bought myself 
this pendulum. Now I must say, all my years of working on divination, pendulums is something I've never really worked with. So this is a new, a new thing for me. Many, many years of tarot and the like, but yes, new to working with a pendulum. So definitely need to um, consecrate that and start working with it more or just begin working with it basically. But yes, this is my altar. Aside from this, I have got tons, tons and tons and tons and tons of herbs that I work with, different incense. This is dragon's blood that I've got on here. I have got oodles and oodles of other tarot and oracle cards, but it's quite hard to uh, keep everything together. I have my crown as well. That is just simply to remind myself of that queen energy that I think sometimes we all need to remind ourselves that we have. I, as a witch, I am drawn to doing a lot of work around the moon, also with deities. It does change for me. I guess I work with the Morrigan and as a result, I'm also very drawn to the Fae. I, I think in the main, I use my altar for, like I say, work with the moon. It gives me a time to check in with myself regularly at different points, to use it within my magic, but also simply for journeying. As you can see, I've got all the oils that I showed to you. So I really like to incorporate those and go into the astral realm, meet with my familiar, I do have a podcast called The White Witch Podcast where you can find out a ton on all manner of witchy things. So that's my current altar. I just wanted to share it with you. I love seeing other people's altars. I guess it has changed in some respects. I haven't got any plants on here. I think I kind of gave up the ghost with, I don't seem to be the best with keeping house plants alive. For some reason, I can keep things alive outside, just not inside. I'm not really sure what that's about, but yeah, that is my working altar. We'd love to hear about what you have on yours. So yes, please do leave, leave any comments in the comments section about what you keep on yours, what you like to use. And I'm sure I'll do another one in the future, a bit more time down the line and see what it's like.